Hello, welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide that is now available online. So if you don't have access, you can simply uh, go here, put it in your uh, search bar. You can put that URL in. Okay, you can enter your email address, click submit, and then you will get an email with a link and you're gonna click that link to get access okay and you'll get that and all these drop down menus can show you we're going to have a number of examples here so we've gone through general features rhythms atrioventricular conduction voltage hypertrophy access intraventricular conduction de delay mi ischemia so you can go back and listen to those lectures we're all the way down here in clinical disorders in this lecture we're going to look at hyperkalemia okay and this is when you have an increase in your serum potassium okay so high potassium levels in the blood and the EKG effects that we can see in them okay because this is important this can have life-threatening consequences if not controlled and so in our patients we always want to monitor uh, our electrolyte levels now just so you're aware this is our reference guide that is free now if you get our course you do get the this printed that comes with it and our course is www.ekg.md all you have to do is go to that website our website go to ekg course okay there's a number of medical schools uh residency programs and so forth that are using our, our electrophysiology uh group here at mayo clinic is now using it for the primary resource so it comes with videos calipers and the books separate from what you get on youtube i know on youtube we have over 400 or so videos uh so this is they are completely separate and they're used what we use to teach okay so check that out if you're interested um in something in more detail that will take you from a beginner to advanced level all right so let's get started here so hyperkalemia high potassium levels in the blood what do we expect to see okay well some things you want to see are actually based on the levels okay and we know that as potassium levels increase meaning from going from normal levels here all the way to increasing potassium concentration in the blood we get different ekg changes in our book in our course we go into much more detail but i've put that here to kind of give you a demonstration so let's look at what changes we see well at normal levels this is a normal potassium concentration okay you see your normal p wave uh, qrs complex and the t wave when the one of the first changes we see in say mild hyperkalemia are these pointed t waves okay these t waves become upright they're pointed so you can see that they kind of collapse and this is your pointed t wave here the best leads that you tend to see these in are the anterior precordial leads so maybe v2 to v4 maybe even up to v5 okay now as the potassium levels increase even more we start to see even more changes okay so imagine this is now moderate hyperkalemia so again you have your pointed t waves here's your t wave okay uh, now what you see is what we call p wave dispersion in which the p wave decreases in amplitude so imagine your p wave here it's going to decrease in amplitude meaning it's going to become smaller it's going to become wider okay as well so imagine your p wave was initially like that and maybe now it look something like this okay because it became wider and as well as uh, smaller in amplitude the other thing you you may note is that the pr interval increases so imagine this is your normal pr interval from say here to here okay now what we're saying is the pr interval lengthens so you have an even longer pr interval because of this so imagine that your pr interval is now from here to here okay so again lowering of the p wave amplitude widening of the p wave okay the duration of it as well as an increase in the duration of the pr interval so those are changes okay as well as those pointed t waves that you can see so that's at more moderate hyperkalemia levels okay now as the potassium levels even go higher what you now see is let's say this is starting to get into that moderate to severe range okay in which the st segment is now going to elevate so now you have your st segment which is this portion here now going to elevate okay so you can see that there and your qrs duration 
so that's your QRS complex, is going to increase. It's going to widen, that is, okay? So that's what you're going to see as well. So notice that widening of the QRS complex also occurs there. So an elevation of the ST segment, widening of it, you still have the low, the pointed T waves, which are here, and you have this P wave that is uh, flat almost. It's widened, and the PR interval is also increased. Now, when things get even uh, more hectic in their uncontrolled potassium levels, this is where you can have uh, something like this, okay? And notice that now you have your T wave, it's now becoming broad, your QRS complex is dropping, everything becomes blurred, okay? And this is where we can get to into a, something called a sine wave, okay? So notice that you can have something that may look like this, a normal sine wave that you may see. And that's something that if not control, okay, if these potassium levels are not controlled, you can have ventricular tachycardia and then ventricular fibrillation and even asystole. So uh, these are really important things that you want to be aware of. Okay, so that's going from a normal potassium level where we saw a normal cardiac cycle to the very severe, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So let's just recap here. So tall peaked narrow T waves, that's one of the earliest changes you'll see, okay? And in that case, if we do see EKG changes, so what usually happens is, you know, we're monitoring, we have these patients on maybe medications that cause an increase in potassium levels. Maybe they have bad kidney function. So we're constantly monitoring their electrolytes. And then if they're elevated, say now the, potassium, the patient's potassium six, Okay, maybe they're admitted, they missed their, a dialysis session. If they have chronic kidney disease and dialysis dependent, we see a potassium of six, we get an EKG, and then we start to see these early changes. Okay, and in that case, we really want to make sure we get on top of it. So notice in these precordial leads, okay, you're starting to see those pointed T waves, even so uh, here in V6, but notice V2, V3, uh, V4, and even V5, you tend to see them the most prominent, okay? Those are uh, potassium changes you should be aware of. You're even maybe starting to see them here in the inferior and lateral limb leads as well. So things to note, um, you could have a shortening of the QT interval, that's possible. You may see some ST segment uh, depression, not always, but that's possible. You may see a bundle branch block that results uh, as a result of these potassium levels. So when you have potassium or electrolyte levels that are out of control, you can have a number of things that affect the refractory period of the conduction system. And so that's why they may result. The QRS widening, as we discussed, can result. You have, may have a slowing of the rhythm, bradycardia, may have sinus arrest, okay? Um, and then you also may have ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation in those sine waves that develop in the severe cases. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We discussed some of these changes. We're seeing more of a mild, okay, this patient's potassium was right around six, so uh, elevated above that normal level, and we want to act on this before things get out of control, okay? And that's really patient dependent. Sometimes a dialysis run can help uh, clear some of the metabolites and help control some of the electrolyte levels, okay, depending how we pull during that dialysis session. All right, so let's just recap here. So some of the changes, they really depend on potassium levels. As we go from low to higher levels, we tend to see more uh, changes that tend to line up with them. Uh, we saw that one of the earliest changes are those peaked T waves that we saw here. So I would remember those. Those are probably the most common and the earliest sign that we tend to see. So one to keep in mind, okay? We saw a number of other changes that you can review uh, as the potassium level get out of hand. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. 
okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, I don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers I think they're very helpful and they can uh, you know if you know how to use them correctly uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the EKG course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG so again from beginner to advanced level with this course uh, you get the book the calipers the coding reference video access okay and now we're offering 25% off 25% off put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day